She was the endearing secret weapon of a brilliant yet treacherous supergroup, a songstress that illuminated natural beauty with a quiet, unpretentious confidence. Her bluesy angelic voice mesmerized us and the sincerity of her music inspired us. She was truly a remarkable artist. It's a tribute to the precious legacy of the world songbird. It's coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you love the music of the rock and roll era, you're going to dig this channel. We get the stories of the songs directly from the artists who created them. We celebrate these great songs, these great artists. That's what it's all about. Make sure to subscribe below right now to be a part of our, our daily celebration of this. There'll be no more crying. You know, she was called the, the songbird for her velvety, soulful voice, just like the beautiful sound of a nightingale at sunrise. Uh, the heavens opened and the world came to a standstill when Christine McVie sang. When she joined her ex-husband, John McVie, to be a member of Fleetwood Mac, she was called the secret weapon of the emerging supergroup. I mean, fans that were smitten by her voice before the Mac, they knew her by her birth name, Christine Perfect. <laughs> Great name there. Uh, a name enshrined in destiny to become one of the most beloved vocalists of the rock era. Christine Perfect came from a musical and spiritual family. Her father, Cyril Perfect, he was a concert violinist, and her mother, Beatrice Perfect, she was a psychic faith healer. Uh, Christine began playing in duos and bands with you know, other college students. She played the bass for the rhythm and blues outfit Sounds of Blue, and she was a street musician for a time, uh, playing with guitarist Spencer Davis, actually. Uh, while she played various gigs around England, she earned a degree in sculpture at the Birmingham Art College and aspired to be an art instructor. Uh, just prior to getting her art degree, Sounds of Blues split up and uh, Christine moved to London where she worked as uh, a window dresser for a time at a department store. And actually her Sounds of Blue cohort, Stan Webb, formed another blues band called Chicken Shack. Webb convinced Christine to join the group as a vocalist and as the keyboard player, even though she had never played blues piano up to that point. Webb knew that Christine was a gifted musician who could really play by ear, so he introduced her to an album by Freddie King, and he encouraged her to study the playing of Sonny Thompson, the featured keyboardist on that particular record. Uh, Thompson's technique was a, a major influence on Christine. It was actually Thompson's style that inspired her great passion for blues and you know, shaped Christine as a musician for the rest of her glorious career. When Chicken Shack uh, disbanded, Christine released a self-titled solo album in 1970, spotlighting a unique tone, uh, possessing a husky vibrancy that captivated fans and critics, especially on her cover of Etta James' signature spine tingler, I'd Rather Go Blind. I would rather go blind Melody Maker actually voted Christine Perfect as best female vocalist in the magazine's Reader's Year End poll. That was in 1970. The stage was really set for Christine's perfect voice to ring out around the world at this point. The next career move for Christine Perfect was joining Fleetwood Mac after marrying co-founder John McVie. Uh, she took John's name and uh, she became known as Christine McVie uh, from that point forward. It didn't take long for her to be recognized as an integral part of Fleetwood Mac, you know, as keyboardist, vocalist, and lyricist. The Mac, of course, had several lineup changes in the early 70s, you know, with founding members Peter Green and Jeremy Spencer exiting the group. Uh, the eponymous 10th studio album by Fleetwood Mac, released in 1975, was really the coming out party in America for Christine McVie. You know, this is when her composition over my head broke the top 20 on the Billboard Hot 100. But every day you hurt my 
It also marked the exciting addition of the great Stevie Nicks and the great Lindsey Buckingham. Uh, this completed Fleetwood Mac's classic lineup as the prelude to their phenomenal success. I'm over my head. Over my head. The landmark album Rumors, that was of course next in 1977, a record full of songs that exposed the, the crumbling relationships and infidelity that festered within Fleetwood Mac. We've talked about a lot on this channel. The powerful emotional tension within the nine tracks recorded on Rumors it connected on a very personal level with millions upon millions of listeners, including three songs penned by Christine that were the hallmark of her incredible ability as a lyricist. Christine's Don't Stop was the third single off of Rumors following Go Your Own Way and Dreams, and it would be her highest charting authorship. It climbed to number three on the Billboard Hot 100, and it topped the singles chart in Canada as well. When asked about how she came up with Don't Stop, Christine described her inspiration as just a feeling. It seemed to be a pleasant revelation to think about tomorrow because Christine is not a pessimist. Yesterday's gone. Yesterday's gone. Yesterday's gone. As Christine wrote with cheery optimism, don't stop thinking about tomorrow, don't stop, it'll soon be here, and when it gets here, it will be better than before. Christine confided that Don't Stop was directed towards John McVie uh, and their failed marriage. There was pain between them about how their relationship had crumbled, but ultimately it was important for Christine to you know, convey to John that even if he didn't think it was true, she never meant any harm to him. That is true. I never meant any harm to you. Don't Stop was a prime example of the magical harmony between Christine McVie and Lindsey Buckingham. Just, just magic. The two of them traded verses on the track and came together in the third verse and of course in the chorus. Christine plays the piano parts on Don't Stop like a, a percussionist with great determination and, and great purpose. And John McVie's killer rhythm arrangement was vital to the song's uplifting spirit and message. Don't Stop, of course, evolved into a political and pop culture anthem, a climax when Bill Clinton incorporated it as a theme song for his presidential campaign in 92. Uh, that included a star-studded nationally televised performance of the song at the inaugural ball of his first term. The fourth single from Rumors was also penned by Christine McVie. Uh, it was a song inspired by an affair that she had with the band's lighting director, Cary Grant, titled You Make Love and Fun. Phenomenal song. Uh, to prevent against any extra drama with John McVie, though, she told him the song was about her dog. Ooh, you make love and fun. The early recording sessions uh, for You Make Love and Fun, those were done without Buckingham's guitar part, so it, it really gave Christine the freedom to arrange the song on her own. Uh, of course, Lindsay came in later to finish the song, uh, playing rhythm guitar on a Fender Strat and uh, with tracking done on a Rhodes electric piano. Christine lobbied hard for You Make Love and Fun to be the third single from Rumors, but the label chose to supersede it with Don't Stop. By the time You Make Love and Fun was released though, Rumors was already on a path to becoming one of the biggest selling albums in history, which you know may have softened the blow when John McVie discovered what the song was really about. The blockbuster Rumors album by Fleetwood Mac also featured the classic Songbird, one of the most beloved Christine McVie compositions ever. Although it would technically be considered an album cutter, a deep track, Songbird became a popular staple of the band's live shows because of Christine's magnificent vocal on the song. I'll never be it was a showstopper. Songbird is a gorgeous piece with heartfelt authenticity that projected you know, the sweetness and beautiful soul of Christine McVie. The song came about in a rather strange way for Christine, actually. Uh, she recounted that she woke up in the middle of the night and the song just popped in her head. She got out of bed, played the melody that awakened her on a miniature piano that she had in her bedroom. And uh, she sang into a tape recorder the lyrics and 
That became the chorus, actually. Like they know the score. And the songbirds are singing like they know the score. And I love you, I love you, I love you like never before. When she described the song to Rumors producer Ken Calais, she referred to her number as a very spiritual thing. Um, keeping Christine's narrative in mind, Ken Calais wanted to do something really special for the recording session. So Calais set up a nine foot Steinway piano at the University of California Berkeley's Zellbark Hall. Uh, as a surprise for Christine, Calais requested a bouquet of red roses to be placed on her piano with three colored spotlights to illuminate uh, the flowers from above. This effectively set a romantic mood in the room for Christine to perform Songbird for the album. Just a really nice touch there. Uh, when Christine arrived, the production team dimmed the house lights so that all anyone could see were the flowers and the piano with the spotlight singing down as it were coming from the heavens. Christine was so touched, she nearly broke into tears and then began to play the song. Fleetwood Mac's double album, Tusk, that came out in the fall of 79 and it featured Think About Me, a tune about a free and open relationship written by Christine. Think About Me was a number 20 hit dropped as the fourth single from the album. The absolutely infectious ear candy that is Hold Me, uh, the lead single from Fleetwood Mac's 13th studio LP, Mirage. That was actually a Christine McVie collaboration with British singer-songwriter Robbie Patton. And it just showed Christine at her best pop-wise. Um, just such a catchy song. Now Fleetwood Mac took a much needed break after the Mirage album every member except John McVie embarking on solo projects. Christine's album came out with her eponymous solo record in 84 featuring Got a Hold On Me. Uh, that was a multi-format smash, number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100, number one in Adult Contemporary, and number one on the Top Rock Tracks chart. So just a triple threat there, a great song. A coveted list of musicians joined Christine on the recording of Got a Hold on Me. Uh, there was Lindsey Buckingham on guitar, Steve Winwood on synthesizers, and Steve Verone, formerly of the Average White Band, and uh, you know he later worked with Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers from uh, about '94, actually through Tom's untimely death. After the nearly five-year sabbatical, though, the classic Fleetwood Mac lineup once again. You know, fought through their personal differences and they made a brilliant album together in 1987 with the release of Tango in the Night. I think it's actually the most underrated album. Uh, Tango in the Night included two more endearing treasures from Christine McVie. There was Little Lies, the third single and highest charting hit on the Billboard Hot 100. That one went to number four. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. And Everywhere. Now, Everywhere wasn't one of the biggest hits for Fleetwood Mac on its uh, initial promotional run, but it has proven to be one of the most enduring. Um, Christine co-wrote Everywhere with her then husband, Eddie Quintella, who was also a keyboard player. You can tell how madly head over heels in love Christine and Eddie were when you listened to Everywhere. It's a testament to Christine's genius for writing a straight ahead love song. I mean, it's enchanting. It's hypnotic. It's, it's just an, an incredible song. One of the best songs of that year, in my opinion. Everywhere begins with a twinkling chiming intro. Uh, it was a clever musical invention by Lindsey Buckingham. He brought that to the table. The glistening sound effect was created when Lindsay experimented with a combination of an acoustic guitar and an electric guitar played at the same time at half speed. Uh, Lindsay recorded the two instruments together and dramatically slowed down the tape. Um, and then in the playback, slowly increased the speed of the tape back to the original tempo. That's what gives it that hypnotic and entrancing uh, feel. As Tango on the Night engineer Greg Droman explains, when you record something at a really slow tempo and then speed it up, all the harmonics shift. You end up with a high end, or in this case, tinkly little high end that wouldn't exist otherwise. 
Apparently there was no other way to achieve that ethereal sound, at least not back in the 80s. And his first run in 87, Everywhere crested at number 14 in America. But it was one of the biggest hits for Fleetwood Mac in the UK. You might be surprised to know that the only Fleetwood Mac song to hit number one on the UK singles chart was Albatross in 1968, well before Christine, Steve, and Lindsay entered the picture. Thirty-five years after its release, Everywhere enjoyed rejuvenated success on the Billboard chart because of its inclusion in a heavily played TV commercial for Chevrolet's electric vehicle line. In 2022, the track spent three weeks at number one on Billboard's rock digital song sales figure, and it entered the hot rock and alternative songs chart at number 25. In addition, Everywhere jumped from number seven to number three on the all genre digital song sales list. And I'm sure we'll see a ton of these uh, Christine songs uh, do that over the next few weeks. According to data by Luminate, the track accumulated over 2.5 million streams and 5,000 downloads between October 7th and October 13th of 2022. Amazing. Now the songs we've covered in this episode, only a small portion of the amazing body of work by the songbird, Christine McVie. For me, Christine was easily the most underrated member of Fleetwood Mac and serenely the most important. She was an artist that deserved much more recognition for her extraordinary musicianship and her unparalleled vocal style that was ever bestowed upon her. But she did receive some high level honors as it were. Uh, Christine, of course, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1998 with her Fleetwood Mac bandmates. Uh, that same year, she received the Brit Lifetime Achievement Award for Outstanding Contribution to British Music. In 2003, Christine was given the Gold Legends Award, and in 2004, VH1 listed her among the 100 greatest women in music. Loved and appreciated Christine McVie. The substance of her charm, character, and deep inner beauty transmitted into all of us when we listened to her sing. There was a warm gentleness and a sincerity that separated her from other vocalists. When I'm with you, it's all right. I loved and admired her, her steadiness and, and her independence. And most of all, I loved her modesty and her unaffected spirit. As Fleetwood Mac founding member Mick Fleetwood succinctly concluded in his autobiography, Fleetwood, My Life and Adventures in Fleetwood Mac, he said, the healer's daughter will always be my sister and inspiration. Much like all of you, I was absolutely devastated to hear of her passing. She brought so much magic, not only to Fleetwood Mac, but, but music in general. Her voice, her songwriting prowess, uh, that I barely scratched the surface of here. She had an indelible presence live as well. She truly put the Mac in Fleetwood Mac. Thank you, Christine. You